So what we're going to look at today is finding the perimeter of a segment and the area of a segment. So we're going to use the ideas that we talked about yesterday. Um, so first of all, you've got a sector of a circle here with radius 7 and its angle here is 0 0.8 radians, we want to find the perimeter of the shaded region first. So you know the arc length is just going to be 7 times 0 0.8. So that's pretty straightforward. So you can find your arc length quite straightforwardly. So that's going to be 5.6. What you need to now do is find the length of this chord. And to do that, you're going to have to use the cosine rule. So if you draw out your triangle, what you can do is you can label it, so that's going to be your angle at A, so we'll use red. So that will be your angle at A, and so that will be a little side A. So these are going to be B and C. So I'm not doing my B very well there, so there's B and there's C. And so what you'll then do is you will literally use the cosine rule to find that angle. So if you just... Think about what your cosine rule is. So a squared is b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos capital A. It's a rather dodgy looking capital A there. So if you put those in and you can work that out. So there's the length of that chord. So all you now need to do is add them together. So the perimeter of your sector is going to be 11 sorry, the perimeter of your segment is going to be 11.1 centimetres. The second question asks you to find the area of the segment. So for the area of the segment, what you're going to do is you're going to find the area of the sector and then subtract the area of the triangle. So the area of the sector is pretty straightforward. So what you would do is you would just use a half r squared times your angle in radians. So the area of your sector is going to be 19.6. You're now going to remove from that the area of the triangle. So for this, you're going to label your triangle. So you've got, there's your angle. C, these two sides will be A and B. So you're going to use a half AB sine C to find the area of your triangle. So that's going to be a half times 7 times 7 times the sine of 0.8. So 17.575. And then you're just going to subtract them. So the area of your segment is going to be approximately 2.02 centimetres squared. Now, if you want, you can use, you can learn to formulate to help you answer those. Uh, and this is how you would get them. So first of all, if you wanted to work out the chord length of a segment, so that distance there, you would just think, well, it's the cosine rule. So you would take out a triangle, label it as we just did here. Obviously, you would, you've got your lengths your unknown length r and your unknown angle there, theta. And you would, again, you would substitute that into your cosine rule, which would give you that, and then it simplifies. So you can see what I've done there to simplify it. If you wanted to find the area of the segment, you would do what we've just done with numbers. You would find the area of the sector. You take away the area of the triangle. So your area of your sector, you've learned a half r squared theta, and there's the area of your triangle, a half a, b, sine c. So a half r squared sine theta. And then all I've done is I've taken out a factor of a half r squared, leaving you with that formula. So this is what your textbook says. So that's in your textbook. You can learn them. I think I struggle to remember these. I, I would just tend to do it by what we did in that first example, but some people really like to have learned these formulae. Right, this is a harder question. So what you've got here, two equal circles, uh, each of them have radius 12, 
and the centre of each circle is on the circumference of the other circle. So even that wording is quite tricky, but it literally means that that distance there is 12, that distance is 12, that distance is 12. So if you were to like move, draw straight lines between all your points, maybe that if I move that instead, you can see you've got two equilateral triangles. So this angle here is 60 degrees, that's pi by 3 radians. This angle here is pi by 3 radians. So this angle here, when they ask you to find the angle P to C1 to Q, is a third pi plus a third pi. So the angle is two thirds pi radians. Okay, so I'll try and move that other thing out, but I don't want that. Part B, find the exact area of the shaded region. So the first thing we're going to think of is if you split that into two, you should have two identical segments. So what the question is really asking you to do is work out the area of one of those segments and then double it. Now, you know that the way to work out the area of a segment is from the area of a sector unless you've learned that formula that we were just talking about. So what I've done is I've take, I've now drawn in the sector so that you can work out the area of the segment. So I'm doing it without having, learned, without having to learn the formula. So to find the area, remembering that this angle here is 2 thirds pi. So without having to I move that, that's going to come away, isn't it? So without having to draw out the sector, let's think, that's two-thirds pi. We know the area of a sector is a half times the radius squared, which is 12, times the angle. So the area of that sector is going to be this expression here, a half times 12 squared times two-thirds pi. I'm then going to remove from it the area of this triangle. Now, I've drawn this triangle out here so you can see it. And, of course, you're going to be using a half A times B times the sine of angle C for that. So a half times 12 times 12 times the sine of 2 thirds pi. So moving that out... This calculation should give me that segment there's area. So if I put that in, so I've simplified it a little bit, I've noticed that it says exact area of the shaded region. So I'm going to keep it exactly. What I'm now going to do is double that. So I put that into my calculator. I times it by two. And this is my exact shaded area. So to keep it exact, it doesn't want to write a decimal. It wants the multiple of pi in and the third. Okay, homework. So these questions are taken from exercise 7E. So you've got question one, question two and question three. So this is what you need to do today. Question four and five are a bit harder and then we've got the answers.